Hello. Remember, in the first episode, we talked about clef, and there are four clefs which are frequently used nowadays. So far, we have focused on treble clef and bass clef. Today, we will talk about alto clef and tenor clef. We will see how to read notes on these clefs, how to draw these clefs, and which instruments use these two clefs frequently. Let's go. Alto clef and bass clef are very alike, except their positions are different, and the position of the clef actually defines the position of the notes. The little arrow in the middle of the clef is middle C. For alto clef, the little arrow is on the third line, so the third line is middle C. Then you will know all the notes in all positions. Let's look at some examples. This is middle C. And remember, this is not just a C, but middle C, exactly the same as this note in treble clef, and also this in bass clef. And the sound will be like. What is this note? We can count it from middle C, C, D, E, F. So this is F. And how about this? C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So this is B. One more. Let's do it backward. C B A G. This is G. This is a bit beyond this topic, but if you want to write these notes in treble clef, they will be. Or in bass clef. They are exactly the same notes and sound exactly the same. The shape of tenor clef is just the same, but the little arrow is on the fourth line instead. So the fourth line is middle C. For your reference, this note middle C is exactly the same as these notes written in treble clef, bass clef, and alto clef, and the sound will be. Now, what is this note? Again, we simply count it from middle C, C, D, E. This is E. And this, C B A G F E D. This is D. One more, C B A G. This is G. Don't you think that alto clef and tenor clef are very elegant? At the same time, they are difficult to draw by hand. When we draw an alto clef, for example, we draw a thick vertical line and then a thin line. Remember, when we read either alto clef or tenor clef, the little arrow is always pointing to middle C. In other words, when we draw alto clef, we need to draw a little arrow pointing to the middle line, and then we draw two backward Cs. This is exactly the same for tenor clef, but we will draw the lines higher. And then the little arrow is on the fourth line, and then two backward Cs. You may print out the manuscript and practice. The link of manuscript is in the description. Sometimes, if we find the clef difficult to draw, we might draw a short hand. We still need to draw a vertical line. Instead of drawing the arrow and backward Cs, we can write a K-like symbol. This is a short hand alto clef. This is pointing to middle C, and this is tenor clef. And this is pointing to middle C. My next question is, which instruments use alto clef or tenor clef more frequently? Before we answer this question, we need to understand the main purpose of using these clefs is to avoid many ledger lines. So these clefs are used when the instruments fit the range. Nowadays, viola is perhaps the only instrument which uses alto clef. Therefore, alto clef is sometimes called viola clef. Bassoon, cello, and trombone basically use bass clef, but tenor clef is also used for their upper register. For most of us, it's easier to read treble and bass clefs. Alto and tenor clefs may need some more practice. You may finish the exercise and see how well you go. The link is in the description. See you in the next episode. Goodbye.
prestissimo, presto, allegro, allegretto, moderato, andantino, andante, adagetto, larghetto, adagio, lento, largo,